Hey you guys, welcome to Blogging with Vicky. Today we're going to be cleaning some chitlins. Yes, um, we call them chitlins. Some people call them chitterlings, the correct name, but they are chitlins up around these parts. So we do not have the Ambessies. Now I'm not saying they don't have them. I have yet seen them in the local grocery stores in my neighborhood. So we're going to be using the Danish Crown. As you guys see, we have two five pound bags. These was already frozen. I already thawed these out. So um, they already say clean by hand, never bleached, packed in water. Um, but you know, when you're dealing with chitlins, you need to make sure that these chitlins are where they need to be. Um, you know, considering what part of the um, pig that they're coming from. So we're gonna go ahead and get that started. Be right back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get these um, opened up. I'm going to show you guys what they look like um, prior to me doing anything with them. If you can see the water, see how this still has some blood um, in it. So we want to go ahead and open up both these bags. And I have a garbage bag to the side because that's where we're going to put our waste. And what I mean by waste is um, the part of the chitlin that we will not be eating that we will be pulling off. And we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and discard it all in there. And I have a black cloth bag down in there as well with some bleach sitting in it because when I take it out to the garbage, I don't want it to be wrinkling too bad. So these are the um, Dutch crowns. They're not as large as, um, it's not as large as the Aunt Bessie's, but you can see them. So this is what we're working with. Some people cut them now. I usually um, cut them and just show y'all. We go inside and out that they don't look too bad. These are not bad at all. Their chitlins aren't usually bad. So we're going to go ahead and do a good rinse with these. And what I mean by that, just to get some of this off so we can go ahead and start with our um, process of peeling off the main membrane. The membrane is the piece that we do not eat. That's the part we're going to be cutting off of our chitlins. So we're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to rinse this off and I'm going to drain it and then we're going to rinse them again that is not the cleaning part i'm just doing that just to get some of the ex excess bloodiness that i think i see off of here and we're going to go ahead with cold water fill this back up while it's sitting and some people use gloves when they do it i don't i like this feel to make sure i can feel and push y'all back just a little bit make sure i can peel off that membrane and a lot of it look like it's been coming off. So it's the membrane on here that we don't eat. So we always want to pull that off. Now I will admit, um, Bessie's comes apart. It looks like cleaner and, and all. So you see this, this part right here on my, my right hand? This part is the membrane. That is not the part we eat. We want to get that off of our chitlin and all that excess fat. We want to get that off of there. I'm going to turn that water off so y'all can hear me. And this is where that bag came in at. We want to dispose of that. So we want to just get all this off. And this is very time consuming, y'all. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll just come right off all the way around. And then sometimes you won't. So this is a very tedious part of cleaning the chitlins. But I just want to show y'all. We get rid of that membrane. Can y'all see it? Pull that membrane off. And there's gonna be pieces of fat on there. I pull that off as well. So, and you know, you might get some folk tell you better leave some of that goodness on there. We're not, we're gonna pull it off along with the rest of this membrane. And this is the tedious part, like I said, of cleaning your chitlins. Everybody has their own method, their own way. But I tell you, at the end of the day, 
you get you some good old vinegar and some baking soda and you get this membrane off and you give these bad boys a nice clean you go ahead and do what you need to do just clean them now some of them will tell you that they're already pre-cleaned and all don't believe the hype y'all you gotta go behind it and clean it I remember when I was um, younger and my grandmother was alive, they used to have, it was in, a, I think, a yellow container. It was called Parks Heat and Serve Chitlins. And I tell you, boy, I used to hear my grandmother say, you got to clean them things. She found more gook in them, so-called already cooked chitlins. It was crazy. So we're just going to go ahead and finish cleaning this up. Getting all this off. This is the fun part. <laughs> now I'm doing a video, but normally I would have me on some good old music. And we would just play some music and drink some wine. But I want to be with y'all tonight, so we're going to go ahead and just chill. So as a, see all that membrane coming off? Now I will admit, again, Aunt Bessie's are bigger. Not sure if this is the smaller um, line of the um, intestine but nonetheless it's going to be some good old chitlins okay so we just got to make sure we get all that off you see it's a lot on there you got to have that good eye and them fingers ready to roll to get it off and the purpose of getting off this membrane you guys is you know that's the actual shoot where all the gook goes so you don't want that i know i don't want that i know somebody probably saying you don't want this but that's okay to each his own and you see we got little pieces of fat that we're going to go ahead and get off and i'm just sticking this through my hand just looking for any other pieces of fat any missing um membrane that i have missed that we have you can see it right there Now, it took me a long time to want to clean my own chitlins because I just, I, I never had the desire to do it. We, we always had certain people that we knew that we could eat chitlins from. So I always ate theirs. And then um, you can find people that cook them and sell them. But, you know, the price that you get for a little scoop, I might as well go ahead and get me a couple packs and do my own. So again, you guys, I'm not going to bore you, bore you with this, but we just want to go ahead and get all this off. We don't want any of it. Not a bit. And get this off. My kids are going to have a fit because they can't stand it. So we're just getting all that off. And I want y'all to see what I'm talking about. See the little, the, 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 there it is, the fat. I'm gonna pull that off and just get some of that off and we make sure we got all the membrane off which we didn't after a while you can actually see the color is different where there's membrane left and we just get them nice and clean so i'm gonna clean a few of these with y'all and then we're gonna go ahead and continue showing you how we're gonna clean these these chitlins okay Okay, I went ahead and got me a bowl so I can put our clean pieces over there to this side so we don't get anything mixed up and I'm not picking up double pieces. But again, we're going to go ahead and pull that membrane off. Just pull it off. Yeah. And it comes right on off. Remember, we don't want this part. That's the bad old membrane. Get that off. That's the whoopsie, whoopsie, shoot, shoot, shoot. And pull that right on off. And you can see. And again, like I told y'all, these are not that bad. They really aren't. I remember back in the day, <clears throat> watching my best friend's mom clean little red buckets. Well, she used to find all kinds of stuff. Cool pieces of corn and everything in there so these are these are looking pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and check out our 
my chitlin. I'll show y'all what we have inside and out. We'll get to that other side, make sure we get all that membrane off. We don't want any membrane. Make sure we get it all off. And I'm just showing you everything so you can see. These are fresh out the pack. And this is what we're dealing with, with the Danish crown. Not bad. I'll do a few more pieces with y'all. And just again, you can see it's not too bad. So I'm going to flip it out so y'all can see inside out. It's not dirty where you can see anything visible other than some pieces of fat and the membrane that we're going to take off. So Danish crown did me good. So this is my Aunt Bessie's until I'm able to find me some. But hey, I think the only comparison right now that I can see is that Aunt Bessie's are bigger pieces than the Danish crown. And that just comes from my eyes watching other videos, seeing other people use Aunt Bessie's. I see that they they are much, much larger, much larger pieces than the um, Danish crown. Okay. This one's a little fatty, a lot fatty. So we want to go ahead and make sure we get all that fat off, all this gook. Get this membrane off. Definitely got to get this membrane off, y'all. I don't want any of this membrane on these chitlins. And you know, when I cook my chitlins, the odor is not all that crazy. If you do a good cleaning, um, you should be fine. Um, I sometimes boil... Take some water with some um, cinnamon and some nutmeg and a potato. And it actually helps try to, you know, cut the odor out. Because, you know, you can tell you're cooking chitlins, but it's not very pungent. Somebody down in the comments saying that's a lie. <laughs> but no, really. You just got to have an eye and know what you're looking for. The cleaning your chitlins. I think I paid twenty twenty nine dollars a pack. So it was so let's just say thirty dollars for a five pound pack of the Danish crowns. They do have the red buckets. I left that red bucket sitting right there. Let me just go with these. Let's get that fat off. I'm working with a nice piece of chitlin here. Getting it nice and clean. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish um, pulling the membrane and seeing if there's any other dirty pieces in here. I'll come back if we come across anything that I, that I think you guys should see um, as I'm cleaning. But from what I'm looking at, I don't think so, you guys. So when we come back, we're going to go ahead and start with our wash. Be back. I just wanted to come back real quick to show you. We actually found a nice piece. Just wanted y'all to see. So we did find a couple of these. I wanted to share with you some nice size. Um chitlin in the bags they wasn't all those little ones and we're just still finishing up getting the membrane off but i just wanted to show y'all the chitlin okay nice size nice size <laughs> all right you guys three hours later we have just finished peeling off the membrane off of our chitlins this is what we keep 
all the membrane is pulled off. I'm going to put this down here. And this is all the gook. All the gook is in here. Remember, that's my bleach um, cloth bag. But all the gook is in here. So now we're going to go ahead and start the wash process. The fun part. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to take and rinse this out. Drop, get this out of here. And we're going to go ahead and run us some cold water. Hmm. All right, you guys, so we're going to get our cold water going. We got this cold water, and you see, after you clean it, it comes out to be nothing. So we're going to go ahead, and I have me some pink Himalayan salt. We're going to go ahead and put this salt in here. Now, the salt, you guys, it actually serves as an ex exfoliate. That's the best way I can say it. It serves as your exfoliant. So we're going to go ahead and get this washing part out. And we're going to do this over and over until the water isn't as cloudy. Okay, and then I'll also just make sure I didn't miss a piece. I didn't uh, forget to pull anything off while we're washing. Because I hate to get to the wash part and be completed and find that I still have membrane on there. And uh, now that's good. Okay, so we just want to keep washing until this water is nice and clean. Some people put baking um, soda in their water. Some people put vinegar in there. Right now, I'm just doing the cold water and salt. And we're going to go ahead and do this over and over until we get a the, as clear as we can possibly get water. And as you can see, I didn't cut them or break them yet. And I did that because um, just in case there was some um, membrane left on there, it's easier to get it off the bigger pieces than it is once they're broken off. But... To each his own. That's just my choice. You don't have to do it that way. I just chose to do it that way. And your hands will be nice and wrinkled. So we're going to go ahead and get all our chippings out. And we're just going to keep rinsing this about five, six times until we get it to a clearness that we, we're looking for. And strain this off. Get rid of that cloudy water that's in here. That excess from when we rinse them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our process again. Again and again and again. We're going to get our salt. And we're going to just keep doing this until we get a nice, clear rinse. All right, you guys, this is wash number four. As you can see, you can see the difference in the water. It's not as cloudy as it was. I'm going to do this a couple more times. And like I said, you put your salt in there and you just clean your chitlins out. Make it be nice and clean. And again, these Danish crowns were not bad at all. Not bad at all. Just combing through, making sure I didn't overlook a piece. Um, so if you can't find out besties or you're in your neighborhood, they don't have it and they have the Danish crown. Give them a try. If this is what we're looking like. Make sure these things are nice and clean. Nice and clean. The odor is not overwhelming, like I had mentioned earlier. And it's um, dying down. The more I keep cleaning them, it, it just keeps dying down. Make these nice and clean. 
Mm-hmm. Not bad. Not bad. And this is the two pack. So this is the 10 pounds. So you already know this is gonna cook down to nothing. <laughs> Probably about five. So you know, but it's just me. Like I said, they eat them. I don't want to eat these a couple times a year, and this is the time of the year when I do. I might have them one more time after this, and that'll probably be for New Year's. I have an, um, another two, two more um, five-pound bags in the freezer, so I'll get them out. Closer to New Year's. I hope y'all can see that water pretty good. As you can see, it's not too cloudy. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get another rinse in. All right, you guys. So as you can see, this is rinse number six. You see how clear the water is now? Much clearer. I think these are pretty good. I might run it through one more time, but I think they're good. Not as cloudy as they were when we first started. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start cutting them up. And then we're going to go start our cooking process. All right. These chitlins are clean. These babies are clean. You hear me? They are clean, baby. And that's what you want. That's what you want. Nice, clean shipping. Okay, you guys. So our next cross, our next step. Um, I already took the liberty of cutting up the chitlins um, off camera just to save some time. And I have just plain water, just enough, just the, um, enough to cover. And what we're gonna do, I am not gonna season them or do anything right now. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice um, hard boil, let them boil for about um, half an hour. And the purpose of that, you guys, is to try to get some of that grease, you know, from the chitlins off of them so they won't be greasy when we eat them. So we're gonna go ahead and um, get that on a on rolling on a boil. I have over here, I'm gonna start um, dicing up my veggies of choice. I'm gonna be using some green peppers, some red peppers, one white onion. We're gonna have some garlic powder, some crushed red pepper, Badia, some onion powder, and some slap your mama. So I'm going to go ahead and start dicing up some of this out. And of course, two um, celery stalks. So we do have celery as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, dice up these um, veggies. And we're going to let this come to a boil. And then when I come back, we'll be ready to season and let these babies do what they do. Okay, you guys, so our chitlins have been um, boiling for about 25 minutes now. I had to clean up our workstation. We bleached everything down. I had to get in the shower myself. So like I said, they have been boiling. I'm gonna let them go for a few more minutes. But at this time, I just wanna show you what I was referencing about that first nice boil. You can get that, um, try to get some of that oil up. We're gonna drain that and then we're gonna go ahead and start our cooking process with the seasonings and everything. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drain that. I'm gonna omit that, you guys don't need to see that. I'm gonna drain it and then when I come back, we'll have our fresh water in the pot with our chitlins and then we're gonna incorporate all of our seasonings and our veggies. Be back. All right, you guys, so we took and rinsed off our um, chitlins, we added some new water. We have our um, heat on medium right now. So I did omit a couple things earlier. I forgot to um, the minced garlic. Um, um, we'll be using black pepper. I usually prefer white pepper only because, uh, 
you know, anything black and that has speckles and stuff going on. You don't want nobody thinking they're dirty, but I am going to use some black pepper. So we're going to go ahead and incorporate our black pepper. And you guys, this is really a season to your to your liking. I will be going heavy with um, everything but the Badia. So we're going to add now, I'm sorry, our garlic powder. Let's get the garlic powder in here. We're going to add some red um, pepper flakes, crushed red peppers. Not too much, but just enough so you can have a little oomph to them. Then we're going to add in some of our onion powder. Then I'm going to add a little bit of my Slap Your Mama. Let's put some of that in there. And then we're going to come over with some of the Badia Complete. And next, we're going to go ahead and add all them veggies I showed y'all. We have the celery, the white onion, the green pepper, as well as the red pepper. So we're going to go ahead and incorporate it, incorporate that in as well. I'm trying to get all my veggies, you guys. Next, we're going to add in some of our apple cider vinegar. You can use regular vinegar. I'll just use what I like, so I'm gonna add my vinegar. Add as much as you want, as little as you want. This is season to your liking. And next, we're gonna go ahead and add some of our minced garlic. Okay, and we're gonna mix that all together. And you guys, we're gonna let this cook. I'm gonna let this cook for about, let this simmer on down for an, about an hour. And then I'm gonna come back and taste test <laughs> the pot liquor. And that'll let me know if I need to add anything else to these um, chitlins. Um, I need to incorporate some salt. Um, if I do, I will use the pink Himalayan salt or a little bit of accent salt the seasoning but we'll be back we're just gonna let these cook all right you guys we are one hour in we are smelling delicious i want to taste just to see if i need to add anything else while we let them cook for another two hours or until they're tender and done. Just gonna get a little taste of the pot liquor as they call it. Nothing else. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cook and I'll be back when it's done. And there you have it, our finished chitlins, you guys. We let them cook for four and a half hours. They came out nice and tender and delicious. As you can see, I paired it with some collard greens and potato salad. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video. Remember, the only competition you're in is being a better person than you were the day before. Peace and blessings.